My name is Tyler Rodriguez, and this is my old 2004 Mustang GT. A little bit of background on the car. I purchased this car back in 2012. I had owned a Mustang before, another 04 convertible GT uh, back in high school, but in college, had to get rid of it, couldn't afford it. So uh, about a year and a half into working at late model, it was about time to get another one. I had always wanted to own a competition orange GT. It's kind of been one of the bucket list cars that I've always had. Uh, would really prefer a Mach 1 or a Cobra, but couldn't afford one at that time. Got to looking, uh, and to my surprise, there was actually one for sale less than 100 miles away. So gave him a call and we're able to go see it a few days later. But we go to look at the car, the car looks great. It's got a few mods on it that weren't really my taste, but working at LMR, we could always make that change when the time comes. Came back to Waco, started looking at parts just like any car guy would. Uh, Monday, got back to work, started buying parts for it. Friday night, we went to go pick up the car. Uh, drove back to Waco, Saturday, we got to put parts on it. Uh, the car came with smoke tail lights, chrome cobra bars, uh, boiler cat back exhaust, and a few little other mods here and there. While these look great, uh, they weren't really up to what I had envisioned for the car. So I got Mach 1 chin spoiler, a grill delete, lowering springs, um, some little plugs to take off the spoiler and just plug it for the time being. The car got the SV cover brake kit, got Tokiko shocks and struts, and just a few things here and there just to kind of finish out the interior. Throughout the whole Saturday, we got the whole car finished. While it may not seem like a lot to a lot of other people, it definitely looked like a whole new car to me. And the car sat like that for a good year. Added a few things here and there. Didn't really do much except take it to a few car shows. Me, Landon, a couple other guys here. Uh, we'd go to local car meets and kind of hang out and show off our cars, just like any car guy would. But the peak of owning that car was taking it road racing. In 2013, I uh, got invited out to Tulsa with a few guys from work. Um, they had the big Shelby meet there with some road racing. A few guys from work go every year. It's kind of a sponsored event that we go to. Uh, take a few cars from work and go race them. And it's a good chance for some of our employees to get a little taste of road racing. So at first I was a little skeptical being a little two valve with nothing really done to it. But we made the six hour trip, got out there first day. I uh, was pretty nervous. Got to drive it around on the track was surrounded by GT500s, Boss 302s, you name it. Uh, and I was just out here in my little 200 horsepower car. Uh, didn't really have much confidence. It was my first time road racing, but uh, the CEO took me out and really showed me what that car could do and really restored faith in these new edge cars for me. As time went on, I was wanting to get married, buy a house and start having kids. So Mustang wasn't really part of the picture. Sold the car, the car traded hands a couple of times since then. I've seen it around town over the past couple of years. Uh, try to talk to the new owners about selling it to me, but we could never really agree on a price point. And then just a few months ago, it popped up for sale at one of the local car dealerships. CEO got a call from his buddy who works there and asked if he wanted to come check out this orange car that he had. And I got a text in the middle of the day that said, is this your old orange car? And I said, yeah. That is uh, definitely not the same shape that it was in when I owned it, but uh, it's definitely that car. The company bought it back as a project car, and that's kind of the state it's in now. This is gonna be our new, new Edge project. As you can tell, we have a lot of work to do on this car, uh, from paint to interior, suspension, brakes, the works. So the goal of this project is to bring it back to its former glory. This car has over 180,000 miles on it. We have about four or five New Edge cars here that get daily driven with about that many miles on it as well. This project is gonna be really showing you that these cars are worth saving and are worth putting your money into. A few of the things we wanna hit on is paint and body, obviously. And this paint has definitely seen better days. These cars are getting pretty old. We're gonna strip it down, get it painted. Uh, once we get it back from paint, we're gonna address some of the common wear items. You've got suspension, you've got the brake system, you've got interior, if you've owned a new edge, you know just how bad these interiors can get from the seat bolsters, the door panels, carpet, just about everything in the interior. And then we'll look at the engine, see what we can refresh there, and just get it to where we can have a nice, clean, reliable daily driver. Definitely some upgrades here and there, some things that you've got to have for a new edge. Uh, we're not going to make it just to where it's stock again, not in our blood, but uh, we've got some really cool things coming. Be a, basically a full restoration. As far as the project goes, I'm super excited to see it back in our hands. Uh, there's a lot of things that we're going to do to this car. Uh, a lot of things that I may not have been able to do back in the day, but it's great seeing the car back. A lot of car guys don't really get this chance. While there are a lot of things I want to see done to this car, 
Uh, most importantly is getting it back up in fighting shape, uh, getting it fully restored, making sure that it's running right, and a great daily driver. Over the last 16 years, the Texas Sun has definitely taken its toll on the car, and it looks to have suffered a few dents and scratches along the way. While it may seem like a daunting task, it is nothing we can't save. With some body work and a paint job, this car is going to be looking brand new again. We met with our local paint shop before stripping the car down to figure out what should and what shouldn't be on the car when bringing the car into the body shop. I'm Scott Hubbard with the Research and Development Department. We've developed solutions for common issues on these Mustangs, test fit parts and new products. Since Tyler sold the car, I've known some of the other owners, and so I've got to work on it for some of them now and again. And whenever I seen that LMR bought the car, I was happy that the car would finally get some attention that it deserves, and uh, I've got involved with helping Tyler disassemble this thing uh, for paint. We started by removing the door panel inserts, switches, and door panels. While I was working on the doors, Hubbard started to remove the windshield wipers, wiper arms, and cow vent grill. With the door panel removed, we were able to access and remove the speakers, moisture barrier, and secure any wires to the door skin to keep them out of the way. This allowed for some money savings on the labor side of things while making the process much quicker so we can get this car back to the shop and on to the next part of the project. To get the car ready for paint, we're going to remove a few body panels to help show you how you can reduce labor cost and make the process much easier for your painter. We'll be removing all of the lights, mirrors, moldings, door handles, and other items that can easily be removed. Most of these items can be removed using common hand tools and the time you put in now can help you save money in the long run. After removing the tail lights, we may have found the blinker fluid that everyone keeps talking about. These tail lights had a lot of water in them from a small crack near the top of the lens, so we're going to go ahead and scrap these lights. We then finished up some of the smaller pieces that could be removed from the exterior of the car before moving on to larger items. This included side skirts, moldings, all of the exterior emblems, and much more. With all of the small stuff out of the way, it was time to get the car on the lift so that we could remove some of the larger body parts. We started by removing the front fender splash shields in preparation for removing the fenders and bumper. From here, we removed the bumper assembly and the bumper absorber from the front of the car. We then lowered the car back down to access the fender hardware. Once removed, we were able to remove both front fenders. With the front end body panels removed, we raised the car back up to reinstall the wheels and move on to the next step in the disassembly process. We went ahead and also removed some of the interior components before shipping it off to paint so we can get a jump start on working on the interior. We started by taking out the passenger seat as this would allow us to easily access the rest of the interior that needed to be removed. We also removed the map light, sun visors, and headliner. While I won't go into too many details of the interior just yet, know it's something to be looking forward to in the future. The factory headliners on these cars are held on by an adhesive, so keep this in mind if you plan on going back in with this after paint if you choose to remove it. Since we planned on removing the carpet, the center console was removed as well. The driver's seat and door sills were removed along with unclipping the rear seat bottom to allow for the carpet to be fully removed. As you can tell, this carpet has definitely seen better days, so a new set of carpet is going on our list for the interior. With the carpet taken out, the rear seats were fully removed, leaving us with just the dash installed, which would be left in when going to paint. Now that we got the car stripped down for paint, there were still a few things that had to get done. I've got to admit, I would have never thought I would see the car in this stage, so it is pretty exciting to see that the car is getting the attention that it deserves. Since we had the car stripped down and we wanted to make sure we took it to the paint shop in the best condition we could, we took the time to power wash the entire body. We covered the coil on plugs, air filter, and other sensitive electronics and went to work. We started at the front of the car, making sure to get behind all of the body panels and worked our way towards the back. With years of buildup, especially in areas that you normally don't see when the car is fully assembled, there was plenty of work to do. Since this car had some body damage on the fenders and the front bumper had seen some better days, we are going with replacement fenders and a replacement V6 GT bumper to mate up perfectly to the hood that we are using. 
The cow hood that came on the car is a great aggressive look, but for the purpose of this car, we opted for Savini's 0304 Cobra hood for a sleeker look. This specific hood is designed for V6 GT bumpers, as factory 0304 Cobra hoods usually have a little gap when installed on a GT V6 bumper. Since we were wanting to get the body panels on before heading to paint to verify fitment, we had Uncle Ted lend a hand to ensure everything was lined up perfectly. You may remember Uncle Ted from our Project Mercury Rising series where we restored his ASC McLaren. With Ted's long history of automotive bodywork, he was quickly able to get the new hood, bumper, and fender aligned perfectly. With the car stripped down and everything correctly labeled for easy reassembly, the car is ready to be sent off to paint. For those of you who may be wondering, we are going to have the car resprayed in Competition Orange because, I mean, who doesn't love a Competition Orange New Edge? The next time you see Keeping Comp, it is going to be free of any body blemishes and sporting a new coat of bright Competition Orange paint. So on the way to taking the car to the body shop, me and Scott kind of talked about the direction we want to take with this car and some of the cool things that New Edge guys really like to add to these cars and what we need to tell the body shop to really do on this car. When we got to Anderson Collision, we met up with Paul. Paul owns Anderson Collision. We met up with Jeff, who would be painting. Uh, Jeff Eaton is one of our good friends here at LMR, and he knows a lot of us, and he's been around the Mustang scene for a long time. So I was really confident and really glad that he was going to be taking care of this car. So when we met up with Paul, he came outside, took a look at the car, and kind of got a good idea of what we wanted to see with this car. We had already met with him and kind of got a basis of these few parts need to be installed to make their job a little easier and had it really prepped up, ready for them to paint the car. We did put a lot of replacement parts on this car, as far as the hood, the bumper, the rockers. Uh, we did want to address the holes in the trunk from the spoiler. We wanted to go with a spoilerless look on there, similar to the bullets. So we had Jeff fill in those holes, which looks amazing, and you'll see that later on in this episode. And as you can remember from one of the previous episodes, the bumper was pretty trashed. We probably could have gotten it fixed, but we went ahead and opted for a new GT V6 factory style bumper. And I may catch some flack for this, but I did go with an 0304 hood with a factory GT bumper. I know I could have gone with the Cobra bumper, but I wanted to be just a little different and I wasn't a huge fan of the cow hood or the factory hood. Jeff and his team got the car disassembled and ready for paint. They moved the parts into the paint booth and got to work. With the Competition Orange color being such a unique color to the 04 years, it's on the Mach 1, it's on the Cobra, I just had to have it on this GT. That's one of the main reasons that I bought this car and I just couldn't switch to another color. As the car was getting painted, I wanted to wait and see the finished product, but I will admit I did stop by there a few times just to see how progress was going. and. I was blown away by how beautiful that color is. When I bought the car, it was about 10 years old already, so the paint had already faded. Here in Texas, we have pretty brutal summers, so it had kind of already gotten some good fade into it. So seeing Competition Orange laid out, brand new paint was something that I had never seen before. When we picked up the car, I was just ecstatic about how good this car looked. You could really tell Jeff and his team took their time, gave it the attention it needs, and the car has never looked this good. I don't even think it looked this good from the factory. Once we got it back to LMR, everybody was checking it out, looking it over and making the same remarks as never seeing Competition Orange look this good. This is one of the brighter colors for this year model and it really pops once you get a brand new paint job. And that just goes to show that these cars really can be saved with just a simple paint job. One of the things that surprised me the most was how good of a job they did on the spoiler holes. When we bought the car back, 
The car did not have a spoiler on it, but it did still have the factory spoiler holes. Jeff went in, smoothed it all out. It looks just like a factory bullet chunk. And these new edge cars look so much better without a spoiler and done the right way. While I was a little skeptical on the hood and bumper combo at first, after seeing it in paint, even without the headlights and the chin spoiler and everything else on it, it looks good and I am glad that we went this route. I can't thank Paul, Jeff, the whole team over there at Anderson enough. The car looks fantastic. Super excited. I just want to get in it and drive it, even with no interior. And now we're going to do the engine bay and the undercarriage. The old tube I've seen a lot over the last 17 years. It definitely needs a good cleaning of probably a lot of parts replaced. So Landon's going to run through there and get it all cleaned up, address what needs to get changed, and it should look like a brand new motor once it's done. We wanted to approach the engine bay restoration exactly how all of you would approach it. The way we did it, we lifted the car up with a jack, supported the frame rails with jack stands, lowered it down, removed the wheels, removed the upper strut mount plates uh, from the strut towers. That way we can hang the suspension. I'll be honest with you, it'd have been a heck of a lot easier to use our resources and just drop the K-member, the whole transmission, everything out from underneath the car, clean, degrease, whatever. Take it all out of the car, do what you gotta do, and then put it back in there. But again, you know, we wanted to approach it how you were gonna approach it. So I just started taking stuff apart. Intake manifold came off, radiator came out, the coolant fan came out, took the injector harness off, pulled the other harness from the bulkhead within the driver's side fender. And really the only thing that was left in the engine bay was a intake manifoldless engine, the power steering assembly and the AC components. That was it, everything else was gone. The cowl, the sub assembly, uh, that covers the wiper motor and all that stuff that was gone once i had everything out of the way it was mainly an organizational thing you know getting stuff organized putting stuff where it needs to go put things in ziploc baggies put tape on things write stuff down take pictures obviously before you take something apart especially if you're doing something this involved and from there it was just start going to town you know clean and degrease uh, the strut towers you name it we cleaned it and really what we were chasing uh, obviously, you know, we had a beautiful paint job. So if we pop the hood on the thing, the engine bay at least has to reflect, you know, all the money we spent to get the car painted. One of the main areas uh, we had to fix regardless what appeared to be some battery acid leaking because it had made its way past the battery tray down into that frame rail. It had, it had really ate it up, but we were kind of able to save it. Of course, you know, we used a grinder, some sandpaper, prepped it and removed most of the rust that we could and then came back with a primer sealer and then shot the engine bay, except for the firewall, which, you know, for the most part, you know, still looked pretty good considering the car's age. And for those of you wondering as far as how did we paint the engine bay, we just went down to our local automotive paint shop, uh, gave them the paint coat, and they mixed us up a couple of rattle cans of uh, satin comp orange, which is basically base coat and exactly how Ford painted, you know, the V6 and GTs during the 99 to 04 timeframe. That was a journey, getting every all the little details masked off. You know, you didn't want a bunch of overspray on anything. You know, obviously we just had the car painted, so, you know, we had to back mask all of that. But once we saw some competition orange paint on the strut towers and saw all those ugly markings, you know, just disappear, you know, and, and be hidden under a fresh layer of, of comp orange paint, I'm telling you, man, you, it, it really started to come together. From there, it was restore, refurbish, recondition all of the electrical harnesses. All of them were thoroughly examined. I cleaned them all. You know, I got all the dirt around the little rubber silicone dust boots on the base of the connectors, you know, cleaned all the connectors th extremely well. Rewrap the harness where we need to rewrap the harness because over time that vinyl tape or, you know, the stuff they use from the factory, you know, it starts to get brown and just looks ugly. Cleaned it, we dressed it, and I'm telling you, I mean, it looked, what, a 16-year-old, 17-year-old harness? It looked in the 95 percentile of how good it looked. I was really proud of that and really Really seeing everything come together, all the hours that I've spent thus far on the engine bay, that's your motivator. Seeing the things progress, get finished, that's what keeps you going on something like this. So once the, all the harnesses were clean, dressed, properly reconditioned, forgot to mention, you know, I had to repair the pigtails. Did some soldering, all that stuff. Some of the connections on the cool on plugs had broke. I believe the crank sensor connector was also broke. Did some pigtail uh, refurbishment as well. So once all the harnesses were done, really it was starting to chase all the brackets. All the brackets that, you know, had that black E-coated finish, they were all blasted and sprayed with the SEM, our SIM, black easy coat, which that stuff's phenomenal as well. That's available currently on our site, lmr.com. Real nice, heavy coats of the black E-coat, and man, those 
again, you know, seeing everything go from old bus to new hotness, you know, that's kind of the word around here, especially when we shoot video, uh, taking off the old and putting on the new. I'm telling you, man, there's something about how much satisfaction there is with this stuff. So the engine bay is probably the craziest transformation that I've seen on this car so far. Uh, we first picked up the car when we drove it back to the shop. That was probably one of the saddest things that I saw on the car, uh, from just the dust pile up to the shoddy work that was done on it. Uh, it looks like over the past 17 years that this car has been out on the road, nothing's really been replaced on it. Uh, with 180,000 miles, probably should have had something done to it. But with all of the labor and all of the work that went into it, it looks like it was brand new. Landon has a really good attention to detail and I wouldn't want anybody else detailing that engine bay and he did a phenomenal job and that really shows. So the engine bay, since we didn't really do too much and we didn't do a crazy swap or anything like that, cleaning it up and switching out some of the parts really helped make that engine bay. We did the battery terminals back to factory spec, switched out the cold air intake that was on it, made it just a nice factory style black color from SVE. And then they took the time and painted a lot of the engine bay as well, refinished a lot of parts just back to factory spec. And it looks like a nice OEM plus style engine bay. Aside from all the new components, we reused a, a lot of the takeoff stuff. For example, stock throttle body, uh, cleaned it as well as we could. Tried to find an off the shelf paint that closely matched the, you know, the cast aluminum or bright silver aluminum, whatever you want to call it from the factory. It, it turned out all right, could have been better, sure. You know, there, you could always, you can always chase perfection. But fresh coat of paint, bright silver, you know, putting it back on the intake manifold, seeing everything come together, it was extremely rewarding. We moved one of our big industrial dumpsters underneath the car. Uh, that way any of the fallout or debris, you know, coming down, we didn't have a big old mess on the floor. It was all going in our dumpster and, you know, we could just go dump that outside. We hosed the entire undercarriage of the car down with a cleaner degreaser, you know, let that dwell, let that emulsify all that old, road film, oil, transmission fluid, whatever could be on the car. Started breaking all that down. You know, we used an assortment of brushes, you name it, and then pressure washed all that nasty junk off. And it turned out really well. We knew going into it, you know, we weren't chasing perfection on the undercarriage uh, just because of, well, for one, the car's gonna be a driver. And two, there was an existing undercoating there that, you know, had already kind of started to fail. You know, we just left all that alone and, uh, you know, continue to do what we needed to do to fix the car. So after we got all the undercarriage sorted, we moved to the rear fender arches. Spent a little time there. We cleaned the area uh, a little more just because we kept applying our cleaner degreaser. The suds were still a little brown. So we hit it a couple times until the suds turned white. Uh, that means, you know, it's not pulling off or removing any more dirt. Uh, once all that was, you know, nice, clean and fresh, uh, we let it air dry really good. We masked the entire area, the body of the car, uh, any of the suspension or surrounding areas that didn't need any undercoating on it. We got all that nice and masked. And then uh, once all that was done, wiped the fender arch with isopropyl alcohol or a prep spray to get it ready for the undercoating. And the undercoating of choice we used was a the 3M rubberized undercoating, which is something we currently sell here on LMR.com. And I'll be honest with you, at first I was a little skeptical of it, but I was blown away. I was really surprised with how the 3M rubberized undercoating laid down. It laid down really, really nice. And the rear of that car uh, really came together with just some undercoating. Once all that was done, that was kind of it for the undercarriage, really. When they first installed the front fender liners, I mean, it made a world of a difference. I've never really seen new fender wells on these cars. Uh, and then when they coated the rear wheel wells to match, it just completed the look. You never really see that on these cars. Nobody really spends that much time and that much attention to detail. But once we get wheels, once we get brakes on it, it's all gonna come together really nicely. This stuff here, you know, again, going old busted, new hotness. Seeing the transition, seeing the turnaround on this stuff, that's the motivator, no doubt about it. You know, that's what that's what keeps you trucking to the finish line. It's hard, it's difficult. You know, you wanna give up, you start to see how long stuff takes, but you can't. You gotta keep plugging and know that, you know, when, when you see it and it starts to come together, it, it's all so worth it in the end. Huge thanks to Landon, Hubbard, Scott. They put in so much work onto this engine bay. I couldn't imagine spending that much time, especially on a stock two valve. Uh, their work really showed, and they did an awesome job. Well, as you can see, there was a lot of labor hours put into this episode between cleaning the engine bay, replacing parts, getting it all dressed up, power washing the undercarriage, and redoing the wheel wells. It really looks like a brand new car now. Talking to Landon, I think there was about 20 to 25 hours in just the engine bay alone. We had quite a few hours in the undercarriage, the fender arches, uh, obviously the engine bay. And for 180,000 miles, I've never seen a two valve look this good.
This part of keeping comp, we're done. We can check that off. Not sure what we're getting into next. More than likely, it's gonna be the interior. I can probably uh, assure you of that. Now with the engine bay, undercarriage, and wheel wells all tidied up, it's time to get to the interior. Over the past 17 years, this interior has definitely seen better days. Texas sun, 180,000 miles, definitely has taken its toll. The leather's all ripped up. The seat foam is just wasted. The body panels need to be cleaned up. The carpet needs to be replaced. Just about everything is gonna need to be looked at, either replaced or restored on this car. All right, so when it came to the interior, this topic was pretty easy. Basically restore the car exactly how it was in 2004, with the exception of uh, what we like to call some OE plus upgrades and modifications. So with the thought process of cleaning, preparing and painting our interior components. Uh, the dash did come out of the car. While the dash was out of the car, this gives you a outstanding opportunity to assess and research and make sure everything behind the dash is the way you want it. While we were in there, we just went ahead and put a new heater core in there, checked all the vacuum lines across the back of the dash, but more of a preventative measure, but we wanted to go ahead and pull the dash just to make sure that everything behind there was in good shape. Having the dash out of the car can be beneficial overall, especially like I mentioned with the heater core. You never want to have to do that job with the seat in the car or the console. If you've already got everything pulled out, that's just really the opportune time to go ahead and do that procedure. In the past, I've pulled a couple Fox body dashes, and as everybody knows, those are not fun. The SN dash really was not bad at all. We do have an instructional video showing you how to do that, and we really break down how simple it is overall to do. Don't be scared at a project like this, especially taking those extra steps whenever it comes to the preventative measures like we took with the heater core and everything else. I mean, you're already that far into it, you might as well do some extra steps like that. We had the opportunity to chase the check engine light. If I recall correctly, there was an error for the fuel rail pressure sensor. Scott Hubbard, the guy is extremely talented. He uh, puts on his detective cap and starts checking wires, checking harnesses. And I would say probably about two to three hours into his detective work, he finally found the culprit. One of the body harnesses that contained uh, wiring to and from uh, the fuel pump, including the fuel rail pressure sensor. Basically, the circuit that was within that section of harness, there was a pretty heavy chafe. Some wires were damaged, were melted, and uh, luckily enough, Hubbard had a donor car sitting in his yard. We go over to his house, we pull that entire harness out, bring it back to the shop, take the harness out of the orange car here, and put the new harness in in hopes that would fix our check engine light. Well, uh, after we got all that harness situated, we put power to it and there you go, check engine light was fixed. I know any of you that have tried to diagnose electrical issues or electrical gremlins, you know how big of a win that is when you figure that out. When we started to address the interior, everything was pretty much taken out of it, including like your interior quarter trim panels, all the B pillars, A pillars, everything was removed at that time when we got it. So we opted to go ahead and take the headliner and replace it along with the carpet and the seat that had seen some weather and really wasn't salvageable at that point. The headliner had a few ash marks or cigarette burns across the top section, like if you were going out the window. Put a brand new headliner in it. That was kind of a chore, to be honest with you. Headliners are never really fun to work with, but hey, we got a great group of guys around this building, so we leaned on our resources and we got it done. We went ahead and put all new hardware where we could, everything along with the headliner, including the dome light. We went ahead and replaced that at this time. We decided to go with new carpet, fresh, dark charcoal carpet. The old carpet that was in there was disgusting. It was the same factory carpet that's been in it for 17 years. Had a lot of wear and tear to this carpet. You really had a lot of the aftermarket stereo system tucked underneath there. A majority of the jute backing from the factory was pretty much ripped out and we really just couldn't salvage it at all. So we had to take everything out of the car, including the console, all the seats, and fully replace the carpet front to rear. But before we did the carpet, we did have to take out some uh... I'm just gonna call it questionable stereo work. Some of the tricks were having the old carpet handy, laying that on top of the new carpet, really getting a general mock-up of where I needed to cut, including like the shifter hole, your e-brake handle, all the seat bolt locations. Everything across the board just made it a so much easier when it came to doing the initial cut for the new carpet. 
We did set the carpet outside for about 24, 48 hours. We let this Texas sun kind of bake it a little bit to make it a little bit more malleable just for maneuverability as well as being able to cut it a little bit easier. Overall though, ACC makes a great product. You really can't go wrong with their product. Cutting it, fitment across the board from side to side, front to rear, it really fit like a glove whenever we did lay it in. The original carpet in this car was very, very faded. It looked like it had some juice spillage or some sodas in the back, possibly some kids back there that had plenty of food and beverage that had poured into it over the years. We might have gotten away with a good steam cleaning, but overall you just can't go wrong with just replacing the carpet, especially on this old of a vehicle and especially for a restoration project. The new carpet makes the whole interior look awesome. So anybody who's been in one of these two valves that has some mileage on it knows how quickly these seats wear out. The framing that's in the seat pokes you right in the ass. It's really uncomfortable. All of the leather on the side bolsters always comes off. When I bought the car years ago, the little pony was painted orange. It was one of the things I hated the most. I had to paint over it with some automotive paint at the time, which wore off and came back to haunt me when we picked up the car. When it comes to the front and rear seats, they put a hurting on them. There were multiple tears, multiple rips, possible burns, maybe cigarettes, that kind of thing. Front to rear, it was just a mess when it came to the upholstery. So when we took off the rear upholstery, there was a hole in the seat foam that really couldn't fix. So we had to reach out to a salvage yard and go ahead and find a good rear seat bottom to go back in there with. Everything else though, the hardware on all the seats, all the plastics, uh, seat motor itself, everything was in fairly good shape. And as far as seat selection goes, we could have went back with the factory GT style seats, but just like anybody else would, we went and did an upgrade. We opted for the Mach 1 upholstery in this car. Personally, I like the Mach 1 upholstery the best, especially in GTs. That upholstery is just tried and true. You can't go wrong with it. It's very stylish, very classic. The aggressive bolstering on the sides and the seat bottom kind of holds your thighs in, of course, you know, kind of holds your kidney area in as well. Very aesthetically pleasing too. Just the silver stripe that goes across the center. You really can't go wrong with it. This is one of those upgrades that just about every GT owner wishes that they could do. We got the seat foam, the upholstery front and rear, and it's a great OEM Plus look. So with these new edge cars, there's a lot of interior pieces that are, just aren't produced in the aftermarket. It's really hard to find. Either they get sun faded from sitting in a junkyard or they get random holes drilled in it to, for whatever reason. They had some scuffs or they get painted or something happens to them to where they're just not salvageable. A few of the panels that we had were not savable. They were not available in the aftermarket. We currently don't sell them. It was something that you would have to get from either a local junkyard or from somebody else who was selling it. So for the parts that we needed, we had a local friend that actually used to work for the company who parts these cars out from time to time. He had every piece that we needed from, I believe, a Cobra at the time. We used the opportunity to go ahead and buy it and just pretty much replace all the interior that was in this car with all the interior from the takeout car. They just needed a little bit of cleanup and they installed right as we needed them. Put a Mach 460 system back in it. Which I really love. I'm not a huge fan of aftermarket stereos, especially in these cars. So two of the most commonly worn items is gonna be your shift knob and your steering wheel. Those are two places that we did address in this car. We went with one of our direct replacement shifter knobs and our SDE FR500 steering wheel. It definitely gave the car a great new look. Our cup holder insert, instrument cluster lens. The gauge cluster that came in the car when we purchased it back got a classic retro style look, but it did need a new instrument cluster lens on it. So Landon went ahead and got that replaced and it looks like it's brand new now. Multifunction switch went in the car because the one that was in this car, it wouldn't activate the blinkers all the way. Plus, not to mention, it was it was too far gone. We tried to clean it, we tried to refurbish it, we couldn't do it. Lock and unlock switches, window switches. We did the Ford Racing Mach 1 or Bullet style pedals, which is that brushed aluminum face with the rubber pads, uh, which really kind of was the icing on the cake down there on the floorboard area. We also did brand new floor mats. Pretty much everything was addressed. So when I picked up the car, when we first purchased it, uh, I was pretty sad to see the interior the way it got. I remember the day that we pulled that car off the trailer and how bad a shape it was in. I mean, it wasn't perfect when I owned the car, but it definitely wasn't in that type of condition. So when I got in there, I sat in the seats and it was just like sitting on a concrete block and then seeing all of the cigarette butts, there was trash, there was just 
human feel. Having that interior completely stripped down, including the dash, steering column, console, everything out of the car, and then just putting it back together piece by piece across everything. It made me feel very accomplished whenever it came to seeing it go from bare bones all the way back to a complete product. Stepping inside the car, it looks just brand new. It smells new. I don't know if it exactly smells like the car did in 2004, but hey. You can't get any better than that. It's an outstanding place to be. All right, people. Well, we've come to the finish line on the interior, and we can finally check that box off of our list. The interior looks amazing. Couldn't have asked for anything better. The Mach 1 seats, the new carpet, all of the panels getting all cleaned up. It looks like the car just rolled off the showroom floor. I can't thank the team enough for knocking out the same interior. Landon, Hubbard, Will, Jay, all had a good hand on the interior restoration. It looks brand new. So still to come with Keeping Comp, uh, obviously we still have to address the exterior. Uh, we have a few upgrades in mind and we'll go ahead and start at the front bumper. Uh, I was really kind of nervous about the Cobra hood and the GT front bumper combination. It actually turned out really well. That specific hood from Cervini's only fits the GT bumper. We could have went with the 0304 Cobra bumper, tried to make it work, but I really think the GT bumper really pulled it together. The headlight bulb connectors and park light bulb connectors, the little tabs on the connector, they were broke off. Y'all know if you have a new edge or any car for that matter, you know how easily those tabs can break. Will Joe did an outstanding job on getting that fixed for us. Got that all looking pretty much factory. It looks just brand new. I know that took some time. It takes a lot of attention to detail. So huge thanks to them for making it look brand new. And then as far as headlights are concerned, we had to go back with 01 to 04 style headlights, which is of course the clear lens and the black housing. Uh, they look really, really good. And as far as the fog lights is concerned, we thought about doing ultra clears, but after uh, off camera, after we kind of put the ultra clears in there and switched those out for the factory style fog lights in the 99 to 04 GT, there's something about that non ultra clear or that fluted or how it diffused fog light, whatever you want to call it. It just looks right. You know, it looks like a stock 2004 GT. Continuing with the front, they kind of add some things from different trim levels of cars from that era. We had to do a Mach 1 chin spoiler and a Mach 1 style grill delete. Those are both really popular upgrades for the 99-04 cars. Just about everyone has them. If you don't have one, you need to get one. We went back and forth on whether it needed a chin spoiler or not. Funny enough, it looked pretty good without it. Obviously these cars didn't come with it from the factory and it had that factory OEM look. I'm a real big fan of that Mach 1 chin spoiler and I just had to have it on there. I guess I should probably mention this way before I started talking about any of this stuff. Whenever we got the car back from paint, we had a local glass shop come out and they put a brand new car light windshield in the car as well as a new rear glass in the car. So glass alone can make a car look really fresh. Fresh glass in the front, fresh glass in the rear. We stripped the tent on the two quarter windows and the front door glass, and you can say what you want, but man, these cars with a glass house is what we like to call it around here. They look pretty darn good without tent on them. So all the fresh glass made the car look, uh, look really good. So one of the biggest surprises that I really got excited about on the car was the new weather strip. I know weather strip doesn't really sound exciting. It's not a huge part that a lot of people think about, but once you close a door and ride in a car with new weather strip, you really can tell how big of a difference it makes. And with 180,000 miles on this car, that weather strip that was on there from the factory was busted. I mean, there was a bunch of wind noise. You could hear everything on the road. Everything kind of creaked. And riding in it now, it's just almost silent. I mean, you still have your noises. It's 2004. It's not a brand new car but it definitely sounds like it was brand new in 2004. Now working down the side of the car with the rocker moldings, the body shop, they just put push pins in it to hold them on while we got the car back here to our warehouse. We made sure all the correct push pins were in place as well as install the rocker molding retaining trim, uh, which is the thin black trim with the Mustang text on it. That was really it for that particular area. Uh, we obviously put factory style side mirrors on it, outer door belt weather strip, quarter belt weather strip, a pillar and C pillars uh, were all installed while we were at this area. Continuing to the rear, not much went on back there. Obviously we put new trunk struts, new trunk springs, a factory Ford OEM third brake light, 99 to 04 factory style tail lights with new bulbs. As soon as the new tail lights went in, it really completed the look. As well as new license plate light lenses with an LED bulb kit. We opted for LED instead of the run of the mill halogen bulb, simply because we think the LED looks a little more fresh in the back. You know, when it's dark outside, the lights are on. So that's why we went with the LED bulbs. We also went with new tailpipes. It did have the boil exhaust tips on it. The black plastic dip that was on the back of the car actually got all over the exhaust tips and I believe it kind of melted or got uh, attached to those tips where it's too hard to clean off. So the exhaust tips need a lot of work. Myself and a guy we call Birdman around here at the shop. Brett Thomas is his government name. <laughs> Birdman and I, uh, we cut the old tips off the car, welded on some Magnaflow tips, which look way better. Could we have saved the tips that were on it? Sure. But we would have had way more 
more time refurbishing and restoring the tips that were on the car than just simply replacing them. Now you're probably thinking, well, why didn't y'all put a cat back on it or a mid pipe or just put an exhaust on the car? When I bought the car originally years ago, it came with a boiler exhaust, full cat back. So uh, we left that alone and we just put tips on the car. It has never looked any better. So rounding out the exterior, obviously a new cow panel, windshield wipers, windshield wiper arms, and then as far as emblems are concerned, the trunk, got a new GT emblem and a new Ford Oval. The trunk emblems, those were reproductions from our site. Looks brand new, obviously. And then the two fender emblems, this being a 2004 GT and a 40th anniversary. The 40th emblems on the side, the 40th anniversary emblems are original. Uh, those aren't available in the aftermarket yet. So luckily enough for us, our 40th anniversary badges that we removed prior to the car going to paint, they were still usable. So we removed all the old double-sided tape, cleaned them up really, really good, kind of polished them up to give them some luster, and then we hand laid fresh double-sided tape, and then Tyler put the icing on the cake for us with those emblems. Since I wasn't just a huge help in this whole project, obviously Landon, Hubbard, Jay, the whole crew was working on it, getting to add those little finishing touches since it was my old car really made me feel a little special about it. Putting on the emblems like putting on the finishing touches of the car. I mean, it, the whole car was pretty much completed, but it still looked kind of naked without some emblems and putting those on looking brand new. It really completed the whole look. While all this was going on, and really prior to the emblems, we did do some isolated paint correction. There are still some sanding marks present. Were we chasing perfection? No. You can always come back and do some paint correction, compound it, polish it, you know, put a last step protection on it, ceramic coating, whatever you want to do. That's all going to come probably in the future. But for us, you know, we were so, so happy to be so close on finishing the car. You know, we just kind of took a step back and really let it sink in. Because we've seen the car now painted and coming back together so slowly, you forgot what it looked like. When we first picked up the car, I mean, it was a mess. You've seen this in previous episodes. But after digging around in my mind and looking at pictures and all the extra B-roll and footage that we had of the car before we did anything with it. The interior was wrecked, the exterior was wrecked. There were some body panels that had just random holes drilled in it ever since I first bought the car years and years ago that I always wanted to replace, just never got around to it. As the exterior was coming together, really the key moments for when the car really started to come to life was obviously headlights, taillights. When I had it, it still needed some new headlights, new taillights, and seeing all of these new parts go in, it was just like a dream come true. It really got the attention that it needed. It's jaw dropping. I mean, it was like, man, like we did it. It was, we felt so accomplished. All right, people, that's it. That concludes the exterior for Keeping Comp, and it's starting to look like a car again. So up until this point, man, it's been a long journey. It really has. A lot of hours in the car, engine bay, interior, exterior, you name it. Countless hours, long hours. And all I really did for the brake stuff, I kind of said, Jay, you know what? This one's on you. I'm gonna let you run with this one. The factory brakes this Mustang came equipped with were lackluster to say the least. Up front, a dual piston PBR caliper was used with an 11 inch front rotor. A measly 10 and a half inch rotor and a single piston caliper were used in the rear. Obviously, we knew we weren't gonna leave the GT stuff on there. Granted, they serve its purpose. The car has 220 horsepower at the tires. You know, yeah, who's gonna say, man, you don't need all those brakes to stop 220 horsepower. Yeah, pff, whatever. So what I originally had the car, the car had the stock GT brakes on it. I used to take a drag racing and the track that we used to race at had a very short track. It was just an eighth mile track and those brakes just weren't as nice as they could be. Braking performance was okay. When it came to selecting brakes and wheels for keeping comp, we had many different options on the market we could have chose from. We wanted to keep the selection of the build practical, but at the same time, we wanted to optimize performance. We knew the route we had to go. We wanted a bolt-on kit that did not require extensive modifications. Since we wanted this build to have a unique touch, we opted for the Ford Performance M2300X, which is what the 2000 Cobra R had from the factory. We felt like the M2300X kit in the front was perfect. And of course, to keep the brake bias somewhat you know, in check, we went with the Cobra setup in the rear, which was an M2300M kit from Ford Performance. So the reason we went with this brake kit is because it almost started out as a joke. When we first started talking about this project, we talked about the goals of what we wanted to do, and I just casually mentioned, it'd be kind of cool to get that kit on the car. I've always wanted that kit on all of my cars, and I just threw it out there thinking it was just gonna be a joke and get shot down, but everybody actually went for it, so I wasn't gonna say no. So when we first got the brake setup in, I went out and opened the box. I had to see it for myself. I've never seen one of those up close before, let alone on any of my cars, so that was the first thing I looked at, and I was totally impressed by the kit. The calipers were huge, the rotors were huge compared to the stock setup, 
and then we went to go install it. Some of the challenges we did face are the hose brackets. The M2300X kit comes with a set of uh, braided stainless hoses, and we did have to make some minor modifications on that hose bracket, literally five seconds with a file on each side just to make it a tight fit on each side. But that's really, other than pulling everything apart and slapping it together, that was probably the hardest part. Knowing that we had to pull the rear axles for the M2300M kit, we took this opportunity to swap out the rear differential cover to an upgraded SBE diff cover. This also provided us with fresh fluid and added strength to the high mileage 8.8 in the rear end. Brake flushes went great, all four corners. Um, you can definitely notice a substantial pedal feel difference on this vehicle after doing this brake install. After installing the brakes, we noticed that the StopTech rotors and the M2300X's rotors were close, but the front rotors needed that extra little touch. Landon hopped in and took the front rotors off, and I painted the rotor hat a flat black to match the rotor that we chose for the rear. It really gave the entire car's brake system a huge upgrade from the factory setup. I've driven several 99 to 04 cars with multiple brake setups. This is by far is probably one of my favorites. Obviously, you know, this is kind of your chips all in in terms of braking performance for a new edge car in consideration and talking about, you know, off the shelf kits. You don't have to piece anything together. It comes all in one box. Again, enthusiast minded mods. It's gonna help you regardless, you know, daily driving. You're gonna be able to stop faster at the stoplight, whatever, if you're not paying attention you're going to be able to late break it at a road course. If you're drag racing with this stuff, it's not helping you none. I'll be honest with you. It's a heavier front rotor. It's a heavier rear rotor. That stuff is rotational. So anytime you add rotational weight or anytime you add weight, period, in the drag strip world, you know, that's a, that's a definite no-no. Now, the icing on the cake for keeping comp were the wheels. For the wheel selection, I was looking at 18-inch chrome Celines. I was looking at the chrome SVE Series 3s. But as a group, we kind of decided the SVE Series 2s. And gunmetal, 18 by 9 front, 18 by 10 rear would be a good fit and you know with those larger front and rear brakes and that open spoke design on the SVE Series 2 I mean they really look great on the car especially against that competition orange paint. I believe I was out the day that they put them on came back and I fell in love with them. These wheels were wrapped in Nitto's MT555 G2 tires on all four corners. We opted for a 265-35 and a 285-35 combination for increased traction and handling and wet braking capabilities since we knew this car would not be a garage queen. So with the goal of the car being pretty much a restoration with the OEM Plus feel, I feel really good about all the upgrades that were made. The only thing I may change, I still think is gonna be the wheels. In the near future, I think Chrome Series 3s are gonna find a way on there. I think I'm with Tyler on this one. This car is from 2004. We think of that time frame, we think of that period, that staggered deep dish look, front and rear in Chrome, I, you, you can't beat it. All right guys, so we got the brakes on, got the new wheels on. We pretty much touch based on everything. We've done it all, we've crossed our T's, we've dotted our I's. Keeping Comp has been one of those projects that has been a long time coming and we are finally getting to the final stages. We've made it to the finish line. I'm still in disbelief on how good it looks. I mean, if you saw how bad this car looked when we first picked it up, it looks like it's not even the same car anymore. With a fresh coat of competition orange paint, I've never really seen that as a brand new paint job. And once you get out in the sun, the color's unbelievable. When it came to select a car, well, really a new edge car in particular to do a project on, you know, obviously we've done Fox bodies. It was time we felt to do a new edge. We could go out and get any car, let's be honest. Uh, it just so happens, coincidentally enough, this car came up for sale. Scott Springer messaged Tyler, said, hey, is this your old car? Tyler said, yep, it sure is. Through discussion around the building, we were like, you know, hey, do we want to get the car? And, you know, do we want to fix it? Do we want to do anything with it? Of course, we said, yeah, where we saw the value in this car. Obviously, Tyler, one of our employees, he had, he had owned it for, for some time. And two, it's a 2004 Competition Orange GT. You really don't see many this color. So yes, the color did play a part in us, uh, you know, ultimately selecting this car. I think the biggest obstacle we ran into was just how rough a shape it came to us in. Everything from the paint, the bumpers, interior, exterior, the engine itself, drivetrain, it was all in pretty rough shape. So we had a task in front of us that we had to, to tackle. Really starting from the bare bones like we did with completely stripping it down and have it repainted. I personally have never dived that deep into a project. Um, I've always had a decent enough car that I never really had to do a repaint on, but seeing the process of the complete teardown 
down to really piecing it back together one piece at a time. It really changes your outlook on how to properly restore a vehicle. And overall, it really opened my eyes up to seeing these SN cars in a different light. You really don't get to see a lot of these cars in that kind of shape, but when you do, you really want to save them and you want to make sure that you do have the basic platform to start with, but you can make it thrive and make it go from horrible looking to the diamond in the rough. We got the full car restored with that OEM Plus look. Really excited about how it turned out. I feel like all of the pieces really work together. The brakes and the wheels work great together. The whole interior looks brand new. Even got some brand new parts that you can't find in the aftermarket. So that really helped tie it all together. The nasty carpet's been replaced. I think my favorite part of the build would be the Mach 1 interior. Uh, it's a mod that I've always wanted. I've had about three or four new edges throughout my entire life. That's a mod that I've always wanted done, just never really felt like tackling an upholstery install. Watching Jay, still don't know if I want to tackle it, but that is definitely one of my favorite upgrades. Does it feel like the seat's giving you a hug? <laughs> the seats do feel like it's giving me a hug. Since the car's been finished up, I've taken it out for a few weekends, let my kids ride in it, and it really feels like a brand new car. Even though we didn't upgrade the engine, just cleaned it up and restored a few things, the engine still pulls pretty strong. For a two valve, I know two valves aren't that powerful, but it still feels like it doesn't have 180,000 miles on it. Feels like the car just rolled off the showroom floor. One of the things that stood out to me the most on uh, keeping comp, I wanna say all of it. Uh, deep down, it's all of it, but if I had to pick one thing, I'd probably say the engine bay. Uh, that's where I spent the majority of my time fixing, repairing, reconditioning, because the car needed it, it deserved it. I probably went about it all the wrong way from a money perspective in terms of not taking the engine out or dropping it out the bottom and pressure washing and to do all the things. You know, did we wanna do that? Sure, absolutely, why not? But. You know, like I said, we tried to approach this very similar like the way you all would approach it. So that's why the engine stayed in the car. All of the surrounding pieces were taken out. They were assessed, they were studied. Did they need to go back in the car? What needed to be fixed? What needed to be repaired, reconditioned, refurbished, you name it. The engine bay definitely for me is the icing on the cake for this car because you go look at every other hundred and whatever thousand, 80,000 miles this, this car has, you open the hood now and you're like, man, what is this, 20,000 mile car? Pat myself on the back. Uh, we, did a, we did a good job. With the car that is as bad as this one, as a company, we're able to tear it all down and see what really breaks on these cars with this many miles. That's a good opportunity for us to see what these cars need, what products we need to develop, and really makes us better Mustang enthusiasts anytime we get the chance to fully restore a vehicle. We get to see the struggles a customer may face, we get to see our products in action, and we get to see exactly how good these cars can look. If I was gonna suggest a project of this magnitude to somebody, they would definitely need to have time and attention to detail. I wanna thank the entire LMR staff for everything they've done, all the hard work, all the dedication, it definitely shows. I know it looks great on camera, but it's definitely a car that you've gotta see in person to appreciate. So first off, I wanna thank Scott Springer. He was the one that found the car. He texted over to me, said, hey, is this your old car? And I was like, yes, let's get it. I'll buy it from you, whatever needs to happen. And he's like, well, I think it would make a really good project car. So Scott, Thank you so much for going out and picking up this car. Real big thanks to Landon. He put countless hours, not only in the engine bay, I know he spent 20 plus hours just on that alone. I can't imagine anybody spending that much time on just a two valve that's basically factory, but it definitely shows it looks like we just put a brand new two valve in there. I'd like to thank Jay for doing the interior, the wheels, the brakes, super knowledgeable guy, got everything installed, everything looks perfect, couldn't be more happier. I'd also like to thank Will, Hubbard, Scotty, Mike Nichols for all their tech knowledge, all of their help with the installs. All those guys are super knowledgeable. They know what they're doing. Could not have done this project without them. Also another thanks to Anderson Collision, their whole team. They got this car looking brand new. I would have never guessed that this car could look this nice, especially in the condition that it was in. I thought it was too far gone, but they made me a believer in good bodywork and good paintwork. And this car would not be what it is today without them. And a big thanks to the video crew, Nick, Chris, and Fabian for running around getting all the footage of this car, documenting everything that we did. Uh, this is something that I would really like to show my kids and it's gonna be a nice little legacy piece that I'm pretty excited about. I know I've talked about this car to a lot of people, gotten a lot of opinions on what we should add, what we should do to this car, a lot of good feedback. Can't thank y'all enough and I appreciate all of the kind words and all of the feedback on this car.
Let us know in the comments below. If this was your car, what would you have done? How do you feel we did with this build? Would you have gone the same route? Do you feel like we spent time on things that you would have maybe ignored? Do you think our time was better spent doing other things? Well, all right, people, that's gonna do it. Hope you thoroughly enjoyed keeping comp as much as we have thoroughly enjoyed putting all this stuff together for you. I know I'm super excited about it. If you wanna see more project cars like this, smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications. That way you're notified every time we release something new. And uh, until next time, for all things New Edge Mustang, make sure to keep it here with the real Mustang enthusiasts at LMR.com.